Hey guys, Paul here. So, as you guys know, Yu-Gi-Oh's kind of got the reputation for being a little crazy these days, right? Lots of huge boss monsters, super long turns, omni-negates, all the things that people don't really always like about this game. Now, instead of just complaining about it like I do in most videos on this channel, I actually thought of some solutions to the problem that I want to propose and that have actually been sort of seen in certain cards here and there in the last few years. So yeah, I've got this list of nine, I believe, of them on my phone, and um, I'm going to just go through them one by one, and at the end of the video, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on these, and maybe other ways that Konami can kind of slow things down, slightly rein stuff in. Um, I got what I think are pretty good reasons for all of them, and there are usually some examples of cards that already exist that use these sorts of things, so uh, yeah, hopefully that helps. Okay, the first is Search and Replace. This is one that I've become a really big fan of. It's basically, whenever there's a search effect, I think that it should not be a pure plus one. Like, you know how you can normal summon most like search cards and they just like get the card to your hand? Well, I like the cards like Springin's Kit, for instance, where it can search a branded card, but then you have to put a card from your deck back into it, or usually maybe at the bottom. And I think this is great because it kind of lowers that amount of net card advantage, which doesn't seem like a big deal because yes, you're still getting the search, but the fact that you are able to um, kind of strategically use it to clean out your hand means that it's not just strictly a nerf, but it does mean you're not just amassing loads and loads and loads more resources, more monsters to just you know flood out in the field, more spells and traps to play. In a game like Yu-Gi-Oh! where there isn't a resource system, I know, old topic, but like the fact that you can just kind of play cards means that any card in your hand is usually live, and that means that uh, effects that can kind of like not just get you pure raw pluses would be a really nice thing. Like I said, Springin's Kit does this. Um, there are a couple of other car like examples in usually lower tier archetypes, so that's one that I think could be really good. The second one is in phase searching. Now this one's a little bit more heavy handed, but one that I think could definitely slow the pace of turns down a little bit. So basically think Bestial Magnemute. Now obviously Magnemute's very powerful, uh, just the Bestials in general for other reasons, but I do think that being able to search in the end phase and kind of centering some more search cards into the end phase as opposed to the like just when they're summoned could be a really good way to again slow down the rate of like cards just getting to hand and then making the run in the field. Because searching in the end phase still means that you're getting a raw plus one, you're getting a search, it's usually free, but um, I think that it's nice because it means that anything you search won't be usable until like your next turn, or maybe your opponent's turn because there's so many quick effects in the hand and stuff in this game. But I think that that would be a really cool thing. Bissial Magnum might not be the best example. Uh, there's like really old cards that did this actually. I remember Genex Neutron was one that I always liked. Um, like way back 10, however many years ago. But yeah, I think that just searching during the end phase, if it's going to be just a free search, would not be a bad thing. Um, especially because it can still activate like on the field, but then it searches on the end phase. So uh, there's like a Gravekeeper's Fusion monster that actually does this. Gravekeeper's <sighs> Summoner, Spiritualist, something like that. I forget the name. But yeah, more of the search in the end phase, I think, could really help to bring down the pace a little bit. Okay, the next one is... Um, Type, attribute, and mechanic locking. We already see a good bit of this, but I think that Yu-Gi-Oh can always use a little bit more of it. So basically, just if there's ever a really powerful effect that like summons a monster from your deck or you know whatever gets you like some sort of free advantage, then let's you know type lock decks, right? You can only summon plant monsters this turn. You can only summon dark monsters this turn. You can only summon hero monsters this turn. I think that uh, those work pretty well to at least keep decks from getting completely out of hand. One of the biggest issues I have with like playing or at least Master Duel, but this kind of applies to TCG as well, uh, it's it just like is the pile decks where it kind of goes from one engine to another engine to another engine to another engine. And so the deck that started out as Punk is now turning into Tier, it's now turning into Branded, and now turning into some Grass thing, and then like, you know, the Rocket shows up from out of nowhere. And so I think that it would be really good to have more cards lock you into types, lock you into attributes, lock you into maybe even summoning mechanics like fusion or synchro for the turn. And I think that, yes, I know some people might say that that kind of makes things a little more boring or a little bit more like rigid and homogenous, but I think that it actually helps cards work a little bit more as intended because oftentimes you've got things that are like synchro based, like, you know, assault synchron or whatever, but they don't really do much to lock you into synchros, especially like Certain cards will lock you in for the rest of the turn. I really think that it would be even better if some cards like locked you in for the full turn. So if you've done another summoning type before this, maybe you can't use the card. Is that too heavy handed? I don't know, you guys can let me know, but I just think that it will help to prevent like the completely crazy combo pile decks that have the really long turns um, and just keep archetypes and strategies kind of more self-contained. Okay, so 
Um, the next thing is I think that we should prioritize bouncing, flipping face down, and other similar things as opposed to Omni Negates. Omni Negates are one of my least favorite parts about modern Yu-Gi-Oh! boss monsters, particularly generic extra deck ones or near generic extra deck ones. Barone de Fleur is obviously, you know, kind of the big culprit here, but there's plenty, plenty, plenty of other cards that just, you know, negate and destroy and that's it. So I think that it would be better to have interruptions that maybe just bounce a card to hand. And there's a few. There's like Sprite Sprend. There's that one um, Ancient Warriors, like Link Monster, things that bounce. One of my favorite examples is like um, Rika Teardrop, who like, you know, she tributes the opponent's monster, but she does not negate anything. And there are, of course, plenty of monsters that can just once per turn, like quick effect, flip something face down. I think those sorts of effects are really good disruptions because they still leave the opponent with a resource. So if I like, you know, have to face down a board of several different boss monsters that have several different effects, the moment I normal summon something and it gets omni negated and destroyed, it's like not only is effect negated, but it's off the field. It'd be nice if maybe, you know, I could at least still use it for something. So if it's like bounce, at least I get to keep the resource. Or if it's flip face down, maybe I can still do something with it, at least can be defense. Um, but I think that just negate and destroy thing is really a bit too much, and it kind of leads me into my next one, which is that I like the, there are some cards that do this, the whole negate or destroy slash banish. So um, uh, as powerful as it is, a good example of this is Bestial Dissipator, where, you know, when your opponent activates an effect, I like the ability to maybe either negate that effect or banish that card, but not both. So if you negate the effect, your opponent still gets to maybe keep the monster or the card or whatever on the field, but if you get rid of the card, then they still maybe get the search, but the card is off the field. One or the other, right? It's kind of like Ash Blossom and Ghost Ogre. Ash Blossom can negate monster search effects, but maybe the monster still gets to stay. Or, you know, Ghost Ogre can get rid of the card, but maybe the effect still resolves. So I think more stuff like that, where it kind of just keeps, um, keeps some amount of power in your opponent's hands uh, would be really good. The next thing is that if something is going to be an Omni Negator or something similar to it, I think that we need to do two things. I'm just going to kind of consider this one uh, point. But A, I think that um, there should be more like costs to these sorts of things. I think the fact that like, you know, Barone or Borloid Savage have barely any cost to them is not very cool. I think, you know, more discards. I know Invoked Mechaba was a good example of that, but maybe like more of that. You have to discard a card to get a disruption or a negation. Or maybe even having to tribute the card. That's where like Herald of Arc Light kind of functions. So I think more cards like that where they have to kind of lose some part of, you have to lose some advantage to just get this free Omni Negate instead of putting the onus on your opponent to just play through your free negations makes it feel like a little bit more of an exchange or a transaction as opposed to just, okay, my monsters are here, come at me. Um, so I think that would be really good. And then my next point about that was, I think that we need to lower the attack points drastically on generic monsters. So I know this has always been a thing that people talk about, the fact that Barone is just a generic good uh, synchro monster and like things like Opelosa and all that. Opelosa maybe not as much of an issue because like it kind of already has other parts of this, like it doesn't destroy the cards that it negates and its attack can sometimes be lowered. But I do think that, you know, on generic monsters, their attack should be drastically lower. Like, I think that Barone having, like, a thousand less attack would be significantly, or even, like, 800 less attack and defense would be significantly better because I think that it means that now you are more encouraged to make your decks kind of in-theme boss monsters that usually, in, right now, in Yu-Gi-Oh! aren't good enough. You can make those because they have higher stats and more specialized, powerful effects, but they can only be used by one deck, whereas the generic stuff is strong, but it's weaker and easier for opponent to maybe swing over. Or, you know, like I said, if they have to lose themselves in the negation, like, you know, tribute themselves or discard cards, that would help a lot. Okay, um, the next thing is a kind of small one. I think monsters summoning themselves in defense position is actually a really big deal. So a good example of this is uh, the Silver Labyrinth Castle Lady. As powerful and OP as she is otherwise, because there's other issues with her, I do like that she summons herself in defense position. Now, her defense is still really freaking strong, but that means that if you summon her in your turn, it's still not so bad because um, it just means that like she can't immediately aggress. And I actually think that this would be a really, really... It's not fully there, but it's like a subtle form of summoning sickness is monsters just having to summon themselves in defense position. Now, obviously, this doesn't work with extra deck monsters, but I think that any of the really powerful bosses like her, and there are a few other examples I'm sure you can think of, having to summon themselves in defense position, you know, maybe even like, I don't know, Kashdera monsters, because they're just so beefy as it is, like having to summon these monsters in defense position would be a really good way to give your opponent a turn to at least swing over them, as opposed to you getting to just like summon them in attack and just swing, 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 swing. Uh, this is like not... 
maybe the biggest thing, but I do think since Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't have summoning thickness, and I think most people agree they don't really want it to be like a game full of that, this could be like maybe a nice middle ground. Uh, okay, uh, I still got two more. I think I ended up having 10. I thought I, I said I had nine, but I think I have 10. Um, during your opponent's turn, quick effects. So what I mean by that is I like effects that can maybe only be used as quick effects like during your opponent's turn. Um, one example in the, like, the deck I use, Rika, is uh, Sacred Tree Beast Hyperiton, Hyperiton uh, the rank 9 Xyz monster, um, only being able to negate cards during your opponent's turn. Or one of the really kind of neat obscure ones is um, Mermel Abyssalacia, it's like their link monster, is able to get its effect to like summon a Mermel monster, but only in your opponent's main phase. I think that, you know, limiting when cards can do stuff can actually limit the amount of raw advantage they're able to generate, particularly with cards that, like, can summon something from the graveyard. Uh, I think that's, like, a really good thing. Well, there's that one Link Monster, Some Summer Summoner. I think that's another, like, just good example of a card that, if I'm remembering its effect correctly, can only summon things in the opponent's turn. So, um, yeah, I don't know. More stuff like that, where it's not just things that can happen in both turns, but things that can only happen in one turn or the other, even if it's still a quick effect, can make those effects fun and dynamic, but, like, limited to not just gain advantage every single turn. Um, and finally is once while this card is on the field. So this is one of the few compliments I have about Barone's Omni Negation, is that it's only once while it's on the field. I think that that is an absolutely great way to limit the amount of times a monster can Omni Negate. Now, does Barone still need maybe other balances and stuff? Sure, but just isolating it to this one reason, I think that when cards can only use something once while they're on the field, that just, it means that at least you can bait them out, right? I can bait out the Barone Negation, and even if it kind of sucks to have to do it, at least that's like the one negation that I have to deal with. So putting that on more cards might kind of just help to deal with some of these boss monsters that are just able to kind of destroy so many things. You could put that on plenty, plenty, plenty of other things, you know, Crystal Wing or um, Boral End Dragon, uh, all kinds of decks, right? So, uh, yeah, those are my things. I think that all of these could be really great balancing mechanisms for Yu-Gi-Oh! to experiment with, and Konami has been doing a little bit more of it. Um, more of the like, you know, cards that search something within us so and put something back, um, you know, more of these cards that destroy or negate, all that kind of stuff. I think it's all great. I just would like to see more of it. Let me know down in the comments what are some other ways you guys would maybe balance Yu-Gi-Oh! Just subtle little things. Like I'm not talking about, you know, like, okay, ban list overhaul or some huge, like, you know, you can only summon three times in a turn, but just little things that you've actually observed on Yu-Gi-Oh! cards that have made a small but meaningful difference because that stuff does add up. So yeah, uh, that's going to be it. I have gone on long enough. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, subscribe to APS Amplifier, of course. Trying to get to 100k subs on this channel. So uh, you'll, be, you'll be seeing me posting a little bit more often. Help us get there. All right, that's going to be it. I'll see you in the next one. Pass turn.